All right, so welcome back to Digital Physics. Now we're going to do example two. Oh, I'm covering it up. Uh, so in the last example, we had a man. So now we're going to have a woman. So a woman pushes a box across the horizontal floor with an initial velocity of 5.2 meters per second. All right. Uh, the box has a mass of 22 kilograms and the coefficient of kinetic friction between the box and the floor is 0 0.44. So here, a woman pushes the box, box slides, and then the question is asking us, how far does the box slide before it comes, before coming to rest? In other words, it comes to a complete stop. So now we try to visualize this and we're going to draw it as a system diagram. So let's draw a horizontal surface. And we have a woman pushing this block. So let's draw a random woman. Um, let's give her a hair. Good enough. Uh, she's pushing a block, so let's draw a random block. And the wording of the question is a bit tricky though, because they're saying the woman pushes the block. They're not saying if she's moving with the block or if she just gives it a one push and it keeps on going on. So you gotta read the question more carefully. So a woman pushes a box across the horizontal floor. So if she pushes this box and this box is coming to a stop, that means that she must have been able to make it move with an initial velocity of 5.2. So in other words, she pushes it and then the box continues to move until coming to a complete stop. So let's try to draw what that looks like. So this is at the moment she pushes it and let's draw the moment slightly right after she's no longer making contact with it. So again, it's not two boxes, it's just a, a moment times zero and a moment time later than zero. So let's call this T initial. This is at a later time. And once it keeps on sliding horizontally, well, that is not horizontally, but we know that at the very end of this time interval that the object has come to a complete stop. So the final velocity is zero. The initial velocity the moment just after she pushes it, it has an initial velocity of 5.2 meters per second. So the question asking us, how far is it traveling before it comes to a complete stop? So they're asking us for the distance, delta D. Uh, do they give us other pieces of information? Yes, we have the mass of that block. So it's 22 kilograms and the roughness of the floor mu k equals to 0 0.44 uh, again here mu k represents the coefficient of kinetic friction so kinetic friction is whenever the block is in constant contact with the surface and moving all right, now that we kind of have a good visualization of what's going on, we should identify the forces acting on the block at this point, right after she pushes it. So here, since we know there's friction, we're gonna have the friction opposing the direction of motion, which would be to the left, Fk. The normal force will be pointing upwards, and again, the one we can't run away from will be the force of gravity, which is acting downward. Okay. But the moment that she no longer touches the block, that means there's no longer any applied force. So the applied force is only if you're making contact with an object. But once you stop making contact with that object, that force is no longer acting on the object. So that's why in this case, there are only three forces at play. So to simplify our drawing, let's assume this box to be a single dot, so we can visualize it much easier. We have the force of gravity, friction to the left, and normal force upwards. All right, so let's add a quick labels, force of gravity, normal force, and kinetic friction. All right, so again, the apply force not acting on that block because she's no longer touching it. All right, she pushed it and kept it moving. 
So once you identify the forces, you're gonna do the net force acting on this object. So you add them all up together. Normal force, force of gravity, and the kinetic frictional force. We're gonna resolve these vectors along the X components and along the Y components, like usual. So here, let's try to put F net. Since we're going along the X, we're gonna add the index X. Mm, well, there's only one force. And that force is pointing to the left. So we're gonna write negative kinetic frictional force. All right. Let's go to the Y components. F net Y. Here we have normal force up, so we take it as positive. Force of gravity is down, so negative. And we're good to go from here. We're like, all right, now let's try to see what else we can do. Well, we can analyze this from Newton's laws. So Newton's second law, let's apply the second law. So apply the second law. What does the second law tell us? The net force equals to the mass times acceleration. So along the x is going to be m a. Okay, wait, wait. Let, let's simplify this a little bit. My bad. F net equals to m a. Then we apply this, so we can replace F net x by m a x equals negative kinetic friction. Welcome equation number one. So we cannot proceed any further because we're missing the value of kinetic friction. So if you recall the formula for kinetic friction, so let's put it on the side here. Recall from question number one, kinetic friction equals to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. So we can replace equation one, part of it, from kinetic friction equals to the coefficient times the normal force. But that means we record the normal force, which we can get from the y component. But before we get too excited, we have to go back a little step and then apply Newton's second law for the y components. So because this block is only moving to the right horizontally, there is no vertical motion. So like before, we can conclude since no vertical motion, what does this mean about the net force along the y component? Uh, well, since there's no vertical motion, there's no acceleration or no motion, so it equals to zero. So we can make the conclusion, zero equals to the normal force minus force of gravity, which implies the normal force equals to the force of gravity. And here we get excited because we know the equation for the force of gravity to be just mg. So welcome equation number two. All right, so now let's try to put all of this together. We have lots of equations coming out of nowhere, but the basic structure should always be working with the x, working with the y, apply Newton's second laws, and once you get more stuck, you need to borrow from other equations. So let's. Start from number one. M A X equals to negative F K. Well, now we know the relationship for kinetic friction, so we can replace that equation. Negative mu K F N. Then we know the normal force from equation two, so we can replace that one. M A X equals to negative mu K M G. All right. Whoa, look what happened here. So we have mass on the left side, mass on the right side. So it turns out those two actually cancels out. Hmm. Right? Like, for example, you have the number two on the left, the number two on the right, divide both sides by two, they cancel out. So that's what I mean. It cancels out. So we can rewrite this as the acceleration equal to negative mu k g. Wow, that's pretty awesome. We didn't even need to know the mass. Why would this question give it to us? You're trying to trick me. Hmm, not this same question. 
All right. Uh, whoa, I totally forgot the questions you've been asking us, right? Because this is so routine. We have to do this again and again for every question. So we have the acceleration, but the question is asking us to find the displacement. Well, now that we have the acceleration, we can go back to the first unit of kinematics and try to use the equations of motion. So here we have initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and we want to find the displacement. So we have a couple of equations to choose from. Also, we have to borrow from kinematics. So from kinematics. All right, so from kinematics, what are we going to choose? Hmm. V final square minus V initial square equals to 2A delta B. Don't forget, those were still vector equations, so we need to consider the direction. So in this case, notice our friction force is the only force along the X. It points to the left. So that's why when we solve for acceleration, it was a negative value. That makes it really clear for us to see that our acceleration vector is to the left. But if you notice, our velocity, after it got pushed, our velocity vectors were to the right. In the case that your velocity is to the right and your acceleration is to the left, this object has to be slowing down, which makes sense because the object is coming to a rest. Hence, the final velocity to be zero. So like, all right, things are making sense. So when we substitute this equation, our displacement, we also need to consider it as a vector. But since we're assuming it move from left to right, our displacement vector is also pointing to the right. Uh, it's a bit confusing, but remember vectors, you have to consider directions. So in this case, let's make some substitutions. Our final velocity is zero. Uh, initial velocity we know, but we'll replace that later. Our acceleration is negative, so we have to make sure that we put a negative there. Negative mu kg. And our displacement is positive since it was going to the right. And there's our equation. So now all we have to do is try to simplify this. So our board looks so messy. So I'm going to try to erase a little bit somewhere. Okay. So we have negative V initial square equals to negative 2 mu kg delta D. What is our goal? Our goal is to isolate for delta D. We have a negative on both sides. Let's cancel that out. Two mu kg delta d. And since we're trying to isolate for delta d, divide both sides by the coefficient of it. So two mu kg. Wow, so beautiful. It's kind of bad that now we have to put in the numbers, you know. That's not so exciting, but let's do it anyways. I, I know a lot of people like numbers. But I get nervous when I use the calculator. All right. 5.2 squared divided by 2 times the coefficient of friction, 0.44. And gravity, 9.8. So the object that this woman pushed travels a distance of 3.13 meters before it comes to a complete stop. Wow, she's pretty strong. Good job. Bye.